Well, Ricard, since I have such a big lead on the board, I'm thinking of changing the channel to an ASMR wrestling channel. What? 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 Lou, what would that even sound like? Good thing you asked. Check this out. Morgan and Natalia were the two women who started off the match. It took little time for them to head to the area between the ring and chamber. You know, you know what, Lou? No, I, 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 I've, heard, I've heard. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Just, just, just play the intro music. We're going to cover elimination. Welcome to TFS by the Lies and All Stuff You Show Podcast. It's 24 7 Lou, and that's. Rick Hard saying if you fell asleep, that's Lou's fault. <laughs> and that's. On a special assignment. The one man band. But we'll get to him later. But folks, let me tell you something from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. And everywhere in between, we are the beasts of the east, the best in the west. You are listening to TFS Pod, your girlfriend, your friends, your pets, favorite and, show. And, and every adult film star's favorite number one YouTube podcast. This shout out goes out to because Illumination Chamber takes place in Canada in honor of a famous Canadian adult film star, Shyla Styles. Here's to you. I love it. You guys are so great. Thank you. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for mm-hmm. yes. yes, folks, in this episode, we will be talking about WWE's Elimination Chamber. We're going to do a recap of it, of what happened, what didn't happen, what could have happened. But yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get to that, since the one-man band is uh, off on a special assignment, I'm going to say the line, Ricard, get to the scoreboard! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> With elimination chamber in the books, Lou, that is your third win in a row. <laughs> really starting to hate the sound. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the lead, first place. No, folks, you're not hearing this wrong. Is 24-7 Lou with four points. Ding, ding, ding. <sighs> then, followed closely behind, still can't believe I'm saying this, by Bogey in second place, who is at two points. Whoa! There it is. There it is. Tied for third, having recently made it on the board. It is the one-man band and the new person. You'll win. Made event, Jeff! We're both at one point. <laughs> and everyone else is at zero. Including me. That's the scoreboard. Back to you, Lou. I'm pulling for you. I'm pulling for you. But after I get 10 points, you can get that one point. <laughs> Let's continue. <with> the show. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Yes, yeah. folks, in this episode, we will be talking about Elimination Chamber. Um, before we get to start talking about the matches, I mean, did you enjoy the show? Ricard? I really, it's all right, all right. Aside from aside from stuff on my picks not happening. Oh yeah, you say, went wild. I I actually wanted I, some I of went, your stuff to happen. Yeah, with how some something played out, I was like, bro, what? My my prediction would have been better, and people are supposedly mad about the the way they're going with uh, post results on one match specifically. We'll get into that, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of good matches. I want to say the women's match, the women's chamber match. There was parts of the booking that I was like, all right, this doesn't, like, if that was the result you were going for, 
the booking left me scratching my head in certain parts. That said, it was fun. It was interesting. Uh, well, let's get into that one first, then. Let's get into that one. Let's get yeah. into that one. Yeah. We'll go into the rest of it later. So, yeah, so I, the I women's... enjoyed the show. I enjoyed the show. I will say that. All right. And the women's elimination chamber match was the first match that we had to start to kick off the show, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. The women's match. We had... And uh, WWE went back to uh, to their old way of having entrants come out. Uh, because if anybody remembers, I believe it was either last year or the year before, 2021, when they did the chamber, mm-hmm. where it would be... So the usual entry that they do for chamber matches is the first four people to come out go into a pod. And then the next people are the ones that start the match. Uh, then there was that one year. Again, I think it was 2021. I might be mistaken. It may have been 2022. It was that one year where the way it was work, it worked was the first three people go into a pod. Then the next two people are the people that start the match. And then the last person to come out is the la- it goes into the final open pod, mm-hmm. leaving everybody guessing as to, oh, man, who gets that last pod? And it was a good swerve for that one year. But then I didn't get I didn't get why they did that. And then they just like, oh, no, we're not keeping it. Um, either way, I like that I liked that they went back to the old format with the entrances. Um, I was really thinking that somebody was going to get attacked. And then I would get uh, I would get my my pick. For those who don't remember, I predicted that no one in the chamber match. Because I predicted that Ronda Rousey would come out. Yes, I forgot about that. Spot. Oh my god! And what a steal and, and steal somebody's spot. And naturally, the match is worth two points. And I was basically eliminated from getting two points by the time the bell rang because of my very bold pick. Now you see that would have worked. If that was like a, a second or third match, so we got a little backstage uh, drama going on, and then uh, an attack would have occurred, and then somebody else would have come out. Ronda Rousey would have come out, but it didn't work that way. It just right off the no, bat, that was the first started, match of the show. First match of the show, nothing crazy happened. It was just yeah, everybody comes out, match happens, and that was it. For the record, fun match. Um, I want to say, I want to say my my growing to be one of my favorite entrants. Uh, right alongside the, the the dance that JC Jane does is uh, the dance that Carmella does for her entrance. There's something about how she moves those hips <laughs> that just really that really work with the entrance scene she has. <laughs> uh, and that moonwalk still gets me. Oh yeah, oh, my God. yeah. No, she's 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 got moves. She's got moves. I like it. I like it. Um, that said, I didn't like how she was booked in the match with certain, with certain aspects. I liked I liked that she did the whole like, oh, I'm gonna hide. Mm-hmm. So she started going into pods and closing herself in and being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna stay in the pod and hide." And then, uh, and then she went to another one, and I was pretty sure she was trying to win a record of some kind by hiding into all four pods in a chamber. Uh, I'm not sure if she did. I think she made it to three. <laughs> yeah, uh, Raquel Rodriguez put an end to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. I didn't understand. I didn't understand some of the booking. Uh, there was one point where Oscar was clearly going to be the threat, and nobody did anything about Oscar. They just kept like going at it with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. So actually, way, we, we, I, I want to yeah. mention this. You were you were complaining a little bit about the booking. It's like why Oscar is getting the push. So so here. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I don't think Oscar should have won. And a lot of people are like harsh. They're probably going to get harsh about me saying that. But let's face it, dude. Her singles record at WrestleMania is not impressive. She lost to Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. I believe it was, I want to say last year. She lost to Rhea Ripley last year. When we believed in her. Yeah. When we were like, oh, yeah, she's going to. Well, I I thought Rhea Ripley was going to win. I said, yeah, Rhea Ripley's going to win. Uh, because it's just the we lost to Charlotte at pre- previous WrestleManias uh, uh, gang facing mm-hmm. each other, mm-hmm. and I figured, yeah, Rhea Ripley had the better, has more potential. So I figured Rhea Ripley was going to win that, but she lost to Charlotte when she was undefeated, and she doesn't really have that impressive of a of a, of a run at WrestleMania. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe after she, Charlotte maybe lost. Maybe she has a maybe she has a tag win somewhere in there. But every time she's gone singles match at WrestleMania for a title, lost. Loses. There was that one year where she where she lost the title before WrestleMania to Charlotte so that Charlotte could have a title going into the triple threat. Yeah. Oh on the Rousey. Like she's been either treated as an afterthought going into WrestleMania or loses at the at the WrestleMania match. So when they were like, oh man, it's gonna be Asuka. She's brand new, this and that. You're just building someone up so that so that they, they look credible going up against Bianca. Mm-hmm. I, I am genuinely of the impression that that I'm like, yeah, this is gonna be an afterthought. Yep. At WrestleMania. They have they have five weeks to convince me otherwise. But uh Bianca Belair has gone from I'm fighting Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch at WrestleMania to I'm fighting someone who hasn't won a singles match at WrestleMania yet. Yeah. Uh, and the thing yeah, is that, that, that I've, I was telling you, like, yeah, they're just trying to build up Oscar. She came back. She has a new look. But yeah, every time you remind me of the, how, how how her losses are in a, at a WrestleMania, that's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh. I I I genuinely don't don't understand why they didn't have Ronda Rousey there. What is her road to WrestleMania? She's well, just, she's uh, just mingling around on SmackDown. I don't get it. Well, honestly, I don't, I don't want to see Ronda Rousey again in a WrestleMania. I mean, main event. I'm fine with Ronda Rousey in the match if she's going to put someone over, which is what she should be doing at this point. And Bianca Belair has, she's beaten two out of the four horsewomen at WrestleMania in singles. Right? Next it would obviously be Charlotte. Mm-hmm. But Charlotte's, Charlotte's already got her dance partner for WrestleMania. And if I'm not mistaken, she doesn't need to beat Bailey again at WrestleMania. So... There's that. Mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey. Like, who else is credible, right? If, if it's not going to be that, who else? Why Why are you just going with, oh, it's going to be Asuka who is going to put her over? Right now, I'm convinced Asuka's being put there to put Bianca Belair over. Yeah. Not to win. That's where I stand. I, I, I think right. Bianca's going to... She, she's got the championship for what, almost a year now. It's going to be really tough to see someone take it from Bianca now. Um, she's no longer the underdog champion, so yeah. Uh, them trying to build Asuka as oh man, this credible threat. Sorry, you can't you can't make me overlook a WrestleMania record. Mm-hmm. You're gonna need to show me something impressive, which I like what they're doing. First, they had Asuka face. Um, who did she fight on Raw this past week? Nikki Cross. She fought Nikki Cross this week on Raw. Yeah, and next week she's gonna fight Carmella in, in the ring. Um, because revenge, right? Uh, in terms of how, in terms of how they went though, there was a point where, first off, I like how they booked Liv Morgan. She didn't tap. She ended up losing to a to a double finisher mm-hmm. of Oscar's Oscar's uh, weird, for lack of a better term, it looks like a modified regal stretch. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Natalia also hitting her with the sharpshooter at the same time. Uh, so Liv Morgan just passed out. And, you know, so they, they keep doing that little hint where, like, Liv Morgan secretly a masochist because <laughs> she's smiling from the pain. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, that's that's that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, there was a point where Natalia had had Oscar in the sharpshooter, and Carmella broke it needlessly. By the way, there was no reason to break it. Natalia started the match. She started the match with Liv Morgan. So she was she wasn't gonna be fresh. Asuka came in last. So she was the freshest. Why on earth would Carmella not let not have it so Asuka's in the sharpshooter? It was one of those like, oh, we booked it so that it happens, but it makes no sense. It no it makes no sense when you think about it. Yeah. Uh well there you go. That was the first match and thanks to your prediction, I got two points. Yeah, no, this was this was a. Uh... I think everybody got got a point aside from me on this one. No, you and Big Al. Big Al had picked uh, Raquel Rodriguez. Oh, and also the ah, randomizer. Ah, there you go. Yeah, the randomizer. You're right. Yeah, Big Al. Big Al was on. I was on the hype train. That it, honestly, I wasn't on the on the Raquel train anymore. Yeah, you were on it before, she didn't win but not anymore. If she didn't win at the Royal Rumble in in her home state, she wasn't going to win it at Elimination Chamber. Oh, well, who's going to win at their home state? Come on, you know you know how it goes. <laughs> You have to lose at your home. Oh, it's better. It's better. 
Tony Khan hasn't learned that one. Different management. Different management. Different management. Tony Khan hasn't learned that one, supposedly. By the way, Bianca always wins in her home home state. She does? Yeah, so every time she goes to Tennessee, she wins. Oh, okay. So don't give me that nonsense about, oh, if it's your hometown, you lose. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next matchup, which was Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. All right, this match, if the last match upset me, this match definitely upset me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm Another not, bold I'm pick. I, I am glad that I'm not the only one who's upset by this because I don't like where they're going with this after. So Bobby Lashley won because Brock Lesnar was put in the hurt lock and Lesnar decided to, to low blow Lashley to get out of it right in front of the ref. Kicked him below the belt. Ref disqualified Brock. We got some good Brock antics where he then he then calls over the ref and then like beats him up, mm-hmm. hit him with two F fives. I think he hit him over, up with an F five on top of the remains of the announce table yep. after F fiving Bobby Lashley. On yep. Uh, yeah, I'll say it. Uh, this should have been a no contest. That was very stupid. That Lashley lost, or rather, Lashley got the win, but by disqualification. So it's just up in the air. Yeah, but you see, here's the thing: that your your no contest. It would have have to been like they both beat the hell out of each other, and they didn't reach like a ten count or something. They could have pulled it off. But, Literally, they uh, went out to the outside. Lastly, could have speared Lesnar through the barricade, and they're both just pounding each other. I get it. I, I again, I, I understand that they, they could have done that way, or they, or again, I was thinking that hurt the hurt business was going to come back. And then come in and help Bobby Lashley, and then it would have been another re- disqualification, and he would have won Lesnar. No, yeah, no. The reason, but, yeah, that, that wouldn't lead to a no contest. It has to be a no. No, contest. no, 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 right no, now, I, no, no. What I'm saying is, I'm, I'm not talking about the no contest. I'm not saying about the yeah, no you contest. Want, you want no. Bobby Lashley winning? I know, or Brock Lesnar winning? I know. But so, no, I'm sorry, her business ain't coming back. Her business is not coming back. Why? Because MVP's doing his own thing with Omos and Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Uh, I'm sorry, this company this company hasn't treated Shelton Benjamin like a like a credible competitor since 2008. <laughs> so yeah, that one was uh, a win for Bobby Lashley because of his qualification. And you know, we, we both need to walk in. And- I still say I still say it's stupid what they're doing. I hope the backlash makes them change their plans. Oh my god, it should God. be. Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar in the final match. Oh, yeah, yeah. What Not is wait. Brock Lesnar versus Omos. Where the hell did that come from? But yeah, like, how are you going to Omos if if you you, you, you lost to Bobby Lashley? How, how are you moving ahead? There, this is, and, and, and nothing, nothing against Omos. He's a big guy. Oh, man, what a big guy. Oh, man. Well, can Brock Lesnar beat this mountain of a man? But Omos does not have good matches. No. The matches he has that are good are because of other people in the ring <laughs> making making him good, look good and selling his moves. Again, Omos it's, it's a problem of a big man. From people. It's a problem of a big man. You're moving kind of slow. You're big. He's stiff. He's stiff. He can move. I'm going to say he can move, but the problem is because of his size, because of because of all, all of them, he has to move slow because otherwise, what the heck is his weakness? It doesn't look believable against anybody else. His best match so far, singles wise, is against Braun Strowman, and that match was a passable match at best. Mm-hmm. Passable. All right, let's go to our next matchup, which was F. Oh, uh, sorry, Beth Phoenix and Edge versus Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley of the Judgment Day with Dominic Mysterio at ringside. Yep. Ah, I'm glad that this match gave me a point on the board. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you went along with the uh, with the one man band tonight. Well, you got, because you got out of that, I that whole long, rebellious. I learned, I learned a long time ago: don't bet against Edge of Paper. Oh, and and, and the Jeff, person who didn't. Did what was that? Main event Jeff has not yet. No, he, now he, I hope he learned that lesson. I don't know if you talked to him uh, recently. <laughs> I hope you learned that lesson because we learned that lesson the hard way. 
We learned that lesson a long time ago. We're done. We're done betting against Edge on pay per views until until we get the impression that it's going to be his retirement match. So I'm not betting against. Him. Yep, and I don't even know. I have I have doubts on that one too. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna win. He's gonna win on his last match. Oh man. So yeah. By the way, our cover picture for this uh, episode is very going to be very funny. Yeah, it's it's Edge. What are they doing? Dueling ankle locks, or are they doing the? Uh, the educator, educator, the educator, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're putting the educator on uh, Finn Balor and uh, Rhea Ripley. Uh, yeah, it was a fun match. It was a fun match. Uh, props to Dominic. He managed to get the crowd to to basically uh, say "f you" to him <laughs> uh, with consistent chance twice. By the way, twice. He had him going. At some point, at some point, he he, he like interfered in the match to cause problems. Edge chased him away. The crowd cheered, started doing the na 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 goodbye chant. Dominic came back out, and they started a nephew Dominic chant again. <laughs> and then finally, Dominic uh, took took a bump on the outside. I forget who it was. I think it was Edge, and he did a, a suicide dive. I believe he did a suicide dive through the middle ropes. Which, by the way, Edge, I, I don't think you should be doing those moves. Mm. I know. With, uh, with, yep. with your medical history. Um, but then again, what the hell do I know? But, jeez. I, I don't think it's worth it. It's a cool move. It's great that he was able to do it. Mm-hmm. He looked a little, he looked a little, like, he looked a little off after he did it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. He was, like, kind of shaking his head like he was getting stars out of his eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad he's okay. The match was a success. I enjoyed it. So good tag, good mixed tag match. So what? what so what is it we're seeing? Did they for WrestleMania in this one? Do, do we have? Oh no, we had. Did we hear a word? Any word on this? I, I I don't know what they're doing with Edge going into WrestleMania. It looks like he's just going to fight Finn Balor. Um, I'm hoping it's the team match. Yeah. They just I I just think you just need somebody to team up with Edge and Rey Mysterio, and then you just have Finn Balor. Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio on the other on the other end, mm-hmm. and I don't know why. I get the impression they're going to just bring back Bad Bunny to be the tag part because he has that history with Damian Priest. That's the only thing that sticks in mind. True. I don't know. True. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing else comes to mind. Um, I would prefer Dominic Mysterio versus versus Rey Mysterio. Yeah, because you're building this up already. Come on, let, let, let's 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 get something. Let's get a, re- a result out of this. I mean, the, the feud has just been going on for so long. You can't the the payoff match can't be Edge versus Finn Balor again. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. uh, I I don't know. I don't know. All Finn right. Balor attacked Edge after his Raw Raw match against uh, Austin Theory. So you know, we'll see where that goes. All right, let's go to the next matchup, which was the men's elimination chamber. What Austin, a match. What Austin a match. Theory, Montez Ford, Bronson Reed, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, and Seth freaking Rollins. What a match for this. I got to say, this is, this is for a mid-card match, this match was probably one of, one of the top five Elimination Chamber matches of all time. And this is just for a mid-card match. Like, it's, it's up there. It's up there in terms of Elimination Chamber matches. Uh, start to finish. Just now, everybody brought now, their A game. I'm gonna say one everybody thing. brought their A game. Hold on, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say one thing here. I know that um, I know it's for a mid card match, and because of the title being with one person now, uh, at least it gave a shine to this mid card title. And yeah, it was a good match. I'm not. I, I agree with you on that. Because usually these these are all uh. You know, for a title match, uh, the, you know, the, this this could have easily. I'm going to put it this way: this could have easily been a throwaway. Uh, we don't have a good history with mid card. We don't have a good history with elimination chamber matches for mm-hmm. non world championships. Mm-hmm. Women's elimination chamber matches hit and miss. Some of them are good, some of them are not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they usually, it's very rare that we have a bad. One. But with the men's. Like, we can have bad chamber matches. We can have really, really great chamber matches. This one, 
when it's a mid card title for the men's. No, I didn't. The, I, only, the only the only point of reference is that I, Intercontinental Championship uh, Elimination Chamber match, and that one was the one where Mark Henry's pod broke early. Oh, and everybody lost their cue. And the match just felt like a mess. So, so that's the that's the that's the point of reference to this. Yeah. The only other one is the December to Dismember uh, Elimination Chamber match, which was an ECW pay per view that. Bomb. It, it was so bad that the year following that match, they did not have an Olympic Chamber match. Wow. That was, in, that was in December of 2006. For, for all of 2007, there was no Chamber match. Not <laughs> until 2008 did they bring it back. Uh, so, yeah, this did not have a history on its side. But everybody went in there and made the match feel very special. Um, I don't like the ending. You didn't like the ending? Even though it gave you two points, Lou? Okay. Yes, about Austin Theory winning. Yes, I get it. I'm, I personally am sick a little bit of Austin Theory. I didn't, I didn't pick him to win because he's my favorite. I just thought that he was going to win it. And he wasn't going to lose the title in this match. That's why I picked it. But with um, Logan Paul interfering, uh, it kind of upset me on that one. With interfering and then... I, so, so I want to talk about some of the spots. Uh, for starters, I like that not until like more than 18, until the 18 minute mark, nobody got eliminated. Mind you. So everybody got into the chamber. Mm-hmm. Everybody got into the chamber. Nobody got eliminated for a good while. Everybody was just in the ring, in, in the match, in the chamber, fighting up, fighting it up amongst themselves. So we had spot fest after spot yeah. fest after spot yeah. fest. Uh, Montez Ford climbing to the top of the chamber, doing the weirdest looking dive that I don't think we've ever seen. He climbs to the top of the chamber, uh, or rather to the ceiling of the chamber, not to the top. Nobody oh, yeah. ever climbed up and out of it. Um, so there's that. Uh, he dropped, landed on everybody. In order to eliminate Bronson Reed, they did a super kick party. Always a great spot. A bunch of people hit their finishers. Really cool. Bronson Reed got eliminated by Montez Ford, who had an amazing coming up. Superb work. Uh, then we had another five minutes after Bronson Reed, the powerhouse, got eliminated before we saw another elimination. Johnny Gargano got eliminated by Damian Priest. And then, like, shortly after that, Montez Ford eliminated Damian Priest. Everybody was kind of doing their own thing. And then, shortly after that, Montez Ford got eliminated from Seth Rollins. Yep. Hitting the curve stop uh, on Montez Ford while he was getting back into the ring. And then Austin Theory got the pin. He did, he did hit the ring kind of awkward on that curb stop. I I thought, I, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it because the, the curb stop looked like it always does. So I don't buy the whole like, oh man, he's out. No, I meant like his, you know? when, he, when he bounced his head on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the mat, he kind of like twisted <laughs> his neck sideways. I think that was just selling. I'm pretty sure that was just selling. And because right. the way, no, the way they kept, like, first off, you wouldn't see that kind of delay. Because from the point Montez Ford got eliminated to, to it was four minutes before Seth Rollins got eliminated, right? So you had a whole four, almost four minutes. And Montez Ford was just in the ring, not being taken to the out there. You really think the reaction time would be that bad for medical personnel? That was to set up the chamber door being open so that Logan Paul could come out. And my heart goes out to one man band because he cannot catch a break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he would have won if Seth Rollins got the win. What were the odds that it would come down to Seth Rollins and Austin Theory at the end? Yeah, but how, how could he go with. See, that's the thing that when he made the pick, I'm like, Seth Rollins, really? Seth Rollins is a workhorse, and even, like you said, even you're tired of Austin Theory. Let's be honest, Austin Theory didn't have the best booking uh, under the Triple H era so far. Uh, yeah, but, he, but we get, time... he has a title on him, and he was not going to lose the Elimination Chamber. I didn't think that was going to happen. Do you know, how do you know he wasn't going to lose the Elimination Chamber? Do you I... really think John Cena needs one more U.S. title win? Because that's supposedly where this is going. Yeah, I know that, but... I... I just didn't feel like he was going to lose it on that one. It, I I honestly was was 
fine with Seth. First off, Seth Rollins is my boy. You guys know this. He's one of my boys. I love his work. I have since day one. Since, since he first came out for the Shield. That's my day one for him. I've well, checked I, out his stuff from before then. But, but Seth winning the title would not have been weird. It would have, it would have happened and everybody would have been like, oh, okay. And then Logan Paul comes out and challenges him for him. Boom, WrestleMania match. Nah, but well, yeah, and, and no no rematch for Austin Theory? Yeah. Austin Theory would come out, whine like a baby, get a rematch, lose, and then the next week John Ross say, ah, I should I should get another rematch. I get, and then John Cena comes out and tells him, look at you. You look pathetic. That's it. That's all you need. Mm. You can make a storyline out of anything. Before you say, oh, no, that doesn't seem believable. There was a point where Goldberg came out and said, and, and said, who's next? And Roman Reigns come on and said, I'm next. And he just got a title match at WrestleMania. Don't tell me you can't just make a story out of nothing. <laughs> uh, I think this one was a little bit different. Uh, it was Austin Theory. Nah, Austin Theory got credibility from him. That's, a, that's what he got from him. They're building credibility for him. That's what I'm. That's what I think. Is all this. Yeah, is. and he paid his dues. He paid his dues for a good point, a, a good portion of uh, late last year, going into the early this year. Paid his dues. What are you talking dues. about? Oh, he was made to look like a chump. Lost the passed in the Money in the Bank contract on a mid card U.S. title and did not win. Okay. Had to win it a month later in a triple threat match off of a finisher that he did not hit. You know that's that's a joke. That's a joke. Usually, when when you win a when you win a triple threat match off of some other guy's finisher, it makes you look weak. <laughs> you know, true. And that goes all the way. That goes all the way back to uh, the triple threat match at WrestleMania, where Triple H hits the pedigree on John Cena, and then Orton punts Triple H and pins Cena without hitting a move on him. And Triple H the next night goes, "Yeah, you beat him. What finisher did you hit on him again? <laughs> oh, that's right. I hit it." <laughs> you just took the pin from me. Yeah. So it's it's valid. It's very very valid. Uh, which is why I was like, yeah, that, he won, but he doesn't look that credible. Um. But yeah, no, he's got his credibility back up. This makes him look good. Going up against John Cena, he looks all right. We'll, we'll see where that goes. We'll see where that goes. Let's go with the next match because, fun fact, despite an event that had. Two Elimination Chamber matches. This singles match <laughs> was the longest match of the night. Wait, wait. I think you're going to say my fact. My <laughs> fact is second, yeah, second yeah. pay-per-view, sorry, premium live event named after a particular type of match, but you don't have it in the main event. Yeah, yeah. Royal I, Rumble, I can't, I can't finish the championship match. Elimination Chamber, finish with a championship match. Oh. World Championship match. Come on. WrestleMania? No wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no wrestling. Jeez, that's pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Come on. Knock on wood. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Don't, don't do that. Don't no. do that, Triple H. <laughs> uh, let's talk about this championship. All right. What do you think about uh, this matchup? Look, going in there... There was no way you were going to convince me that Sami Zayn was going to win. Yeah. Um, but I did like, I did like, and I, I mentioned, I was on our group chat, I was saying it. I was like, oh, the Uranagi wasn't enough to pin Sami Zayn. Hmm. Oh, Superman Punch wasn't enough to pin Sami Zayn. The Spear wasn't enough to pin Sami Zayn. I was like, oh, man, here we go. But all the ref bumps, no. All the, after all the ref bumps, I was like, oh, that's it. Um, Jey Uso had that moment where it looked like he was probably going to redo the, the, the cutscene from Royal Rumble mm -hmm. and take Sami Zayn's place for a moment. He didn't. He didn't pull the trigger. Zayn went for the spear on Reigns, missed, and hit Jey Uso, who then for some reason just evaporated. Never saw Jey Uso again after that. <laughs> Sami Zayn, realizing what he did, turned around, took a spear. One, two, three. He lost in front of his his home country, his hometown, his wife, his hometown, his family, all of it. 
and then they started beating up on him. Jimmy Jimmy Uso started beating up on him, and then and then Kevin Owens came out. Yep. It beat up Jimmy Uso, started beating up on Roman Reigns, and one of my favorites, Paul Heyman, actually was willing to take a bump and took a stunner from Kevin Owens after throwing some of the weakest looking punches ever. <laughs> and then Kevin Owens did did us a favor and let Sami Zayn hit the halluva kick on to end the show. Yeah. He took an ovation, but he didn't walk away with the championship. It's going to be Reigns versus Rhodes at WrestleMania. I'm tired of this already, man. Get, get away the titles from him. I think I think that's what they're going for. I, I'm telling you, Reigns is so close to 1,000 days, I could see them going for it. Oh, yeah, days. we did that math, didn't we? Yeah. Will it happen in Backlash, or will it happen on, on WrestleMania? It's after WrestleMania that he hits 1,000 days. So Rhodes has some very... Very important storytelling that he has to come through on. Um, should be interesting. Should yeah, be interesting. so there you are. Those are that's our recap of uh, WWE's Elimination Chamber, which uh, kind of eliminated you and everyone else uh, except uh, the main event, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Main event, Jeff, almost... Well, he said it, but it wouldn't have counted anyways. He almost got a perfect score. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, man. Good good event all, overall, but uh, I think I think what I got what we got to say to close this out is, let me, let me see if I can do this here. And so, once again, the reigning, defending, predictions world champ, 24-7 left.